Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at enabling a uh, piece of functionality in Devise that I think has been covered before by other people probably, but I get comments about this every once in a while, is the ability to limit how many failed login attempts you can have, and then either make it so that you have to wait, let's say 10 minutes before you can try again, or as you can see here in the terminal hopefully, it will send out a email to the user uh, after you have failed to log in a set amount of times. So it's, it's pretty simple to set up, uh, and uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and uh, do this real quick. To get started, we're going to go ahead and CD out of my demo app and just run a Rails new, let me zoom in a bit so you can see this, video. We'll CD into that video, and then we'll do a code dot. So this is pretty much just built into Devise. If you're not familiar, oh, this is a spoiler for a different video. Uh, if you're not familiar, you can always just go over to the Devise gem and they're gonna have a lot of this stuff documented on the actual GitHub page for Devise, depending on what you're interested in. So in this case, we're looking at the lockable section. You can come over here to the lockable section. You can see all of this stuff right here if you want to. Uh, alternatively, if I close this and move it over, and I move over the uh, window right here, if we just add the Devise gem real quick, say gem uh, device, and then if we run a bundle command, to uh, you know, install device and then do a uh, rails g device colon install and we can just real quick do a rails g device user command if we do this we can now come over to our config our initializers and our device.rb f11 to full screen and control plus to increase the font size if we come in here and we search for a blockable we'll take you to the configuration block for lockable here you can see either a failed attempts uh, or a uh, a none option, which is just saying you know anything that you want to use to lock an account. You know you might you might even just use this for for banning a user, for example. You might just say, all right, I'm going to use this because I'm feeling kind of lazy, uh, and then you just make a button that sets the lockable for you. So in our case, we'll just set the lock strategy to this failed attempts. We can hit Control and question mark to uncomment this. You can then come down here and say, okay, what do you want to use when locking and unlocking an account? I want to use the email. Then you have the option of which strategy to use when unlocking an account. So you have the option of sending a email or having it wait like a set amount of time, or you can set it to both, or again, you can set it to none. In the case of, uh, you know, banning a user, you might want to leave it as none. In this case, what I'm going to do is set it to both. We'll then change the maximum attempts here down to something like three, just for the sake of testing. You then have the option to unlock in a set amount of time. Uh, you know, you could either leave this as one hour or we could do like, I don't know, one dot minute, for example. So we'll just test it real quick to make sure that it locks us out and sends the email. And then we can also just wait a minute to make sure that's working. You can also set something to give you a warning if you are on your last attempt, and then we go down to the recoverable section. That's all the config in here. As for the actual setup, there's two steps. One is gonna to be to come into your app, your models, and your user.rb. You're gonna add a comma after the validatable. You're just gonna say, this also needs to include lockable. Now that we've done that, we can come down to our DB and our migrate, open up our device migration. And in here, what we wanna do is make sure that we uncomment these three lines, one for the number of failed attempts that we've had, one for the unlock token, and one for the timestamp from when this was actually locked. We can go ahead and save this now. We now come over here and we, uh, let's just generate a controller. We'll say Rails G controller pages home, for example. And we can do a Rails S to start our server. We'll come into our config config and our routes.rb. I can click on it. In here, we just want to change the root to the pages controller and the home action. Let's come into the pages controller and the home action. Let's just do a quick little block to say if uh, current current underscore user, then we want to do a uh, logout button. And then else we want to do a sign in button. And we can end that. You need to change this. This does need to include the data colon and it needs to have a turbo underscore method colon colon delete because we're using Rails 7. This is required uh, so that turbo will play nicely with it. That will now give us the ability to log in and log out. Let's also just add in something real quick where we can say, uh, I don't know, like uh, current underscore user dot email just so that we can see who we're logged in as. 
Now let's come over to localhost port 3000. It'll tell us we have migrations pending. We can go ahead and run those. That'll take us to our homepage. We can now sign in. I'll go ahead and sign in. Say Dean at, oops, let me go over to sign up and I'll say Dean at example.com. I'll copy my email, paste it in as my password, click sign up. That works. Now I'm gonna click sign out, sign in. And now I can test this. I can go over here and I can say uh, Dean at uh, example.com and I can just type in, I don't know, like one, two, three. I'll click login. And now as I do this, we should hopefully see in the terminal down here that the user gets updated as we uh, try to log in incorrectly. You can see here the failed attempts has been incremented, right? So our failed attempts is now set to one. I'm gonna come down here, I'll type in two, try to log in again. I'll scroll down a bit until I find the yellow text. And here we can see that our failed attempts has been set again. So now our failed attempts should be set to two. And now come in here, type three, click login. And now we should see uh, that we are missing a host to link to. So what this is, is doing is because it's trying to redirect us, we need to provide where it needs to go to. To set this up, it's actually pretty simple. We just come into our config, our environments, and our development.rb. What we wanna do in here is set the uh, action underscore mailer, uh, and it doesn't actually have it in here. So we're just gonna go ahead and add a new line. Say config dot action underscore mailer dot default URL options is equal to open up some braces and we'll set the host for this. And the host for this is going to depend on what you're running. In our case, we're just running a local host. So we're just going to set the URL for the local host, which is localhost port 3000, just like that. We now need to stop our server and start it. That's important. Otherwise, these changes won't take effect. You now come over to the sign in. I'm going to try to do this again. I'll say dnetexample.com with a password of one. That will update our uh, lock right here to say we failed to log in. So our failed attempts has been set. I'm going to put in two. We'll do it again. You can see that's been updated again. Now I'll put in three, click it again. And now we can see right here that instead of just updating it, we've now failed to log in three times since the last time the server started in or started up. So now we have the device mailer unlock instructions being sent out. It delivers the mail. Uh, it has the uh, from and the reply to, and then it has the message contents where it tells you, hello, dnetexample.com. Your account has been locked due to an excessive number of unsuccessful sign in attempts. Click the link below to unlock your account. And then that's just how you go in here to unlock it. So you would like, you know, open this up in your browser or whatever. Oops, open this up in your browser and just visit the URL and then type dean at example.com with a pass oops with a password of my email and that will let you log in if you for example tried to do this and do uh, dean at example.com type one two and then three so you get thrown out again uh, what you can try now is just pasting in your proper password and what you'll see is you can't log in because you are locked out right now even if you guess it correctly so that's sort of a, a security layer you can have there now, uh, the other option you have here is to just wait until the one minute or whatever we set this to has elapsed, which uh, should happen at some point. And we should see it right here. While that's waiting, uh, one thing I wanna point out, if you want to customize the mailer or anything like that, uh, what we have to do is, I'm gonna hit Control Shift T to open up a new window here. Uh, what you have to do is go to whatever your directory is. So YouTube Rails Lockable Video. And then in here, what we want to do is a Rails G device colon views command and generate that. Now we can come over to our views for device and our mailer. And here you can see the unlock instructions right here. And this is where your unlock instruction email lives. So this is what you would want to customize if you wanted to. You could also change whatever uh, config you need uh, to update what your from and to email addresses are. Uh, but eventually you should hopefully get this set up right. You should have the minute elapse and now you're able to log in again without clicking the link in the email. So that's basically all I wanted to cover. It's pretty simple to set up. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, you do a little bit of configuration. You make sure you set it up correctly. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was helpful. If you've been emailing me about this, hopefully this answers your question. Uh, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.